Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Tesla entering the audio business, new Model 3 and Y updates, Model Y production at Giga Texas, Model X updates, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, deliveries of the refreshed Tesla Model X have been ramping up slowly, and now we're seeing refreshed Model Xs show up in other countries. First, last week, a Model X Plaid was spotted in Taiwan sporting a brand new CCS2 port that has not been seen before on that car or on the Model S. The new port requires a larger charge port door, and now another prototype with the same door has been spotted in Norway. This is clearly a refreshed Model X complete with yoke, and it has a larger door to accommodate CCS2, which is standard in most countries. CCS2 is actually pretty standard in the United States for everything besides Teslas, and it'll be interesting to see going forward how Tesla handles that when opening up their supercharger network. Tesla's charge port is smaller and more convenient, but it's proprietary, leading some to think Tesla may end up switching altogether to CCS2. As noted in this article, this prototype was actually built based on its VIN earlier than October of 2021, so Tesla has been testing this new charge port door on these cars for some time. They also appear to be doing some true winter testing, and that's great to see since Tesla has been facing some severe issues with their heat pump system in extreme climates. Elon Musk tweeted that, quote, firmware fix to recalibrate heat pump expansion valve is rolling out now, but many are now noting that the heating issues aren't exclusive to Tesla's heat pump system. Some older Model 3s without heat pumps are experiencing similar heating failures. For some customers, they have noted that the problems occurred after a software update, and if that's the case, it does point out some potential issues with receiving over-the-air software updates in your car. Getting regular updates on an old car is a new concept, and it typically brings great new features to a Tesla, but some issues with older heaters are now out of warranty for the fix, and if software caused the issue, that's a big deal. Now that's all speculation as to the cause of that, but Tesla does have a heating issue going on, particularly in extreme climates, and I'll be sure to follow up how they resolve this. Next up today, something I haven't had a chance yet to mention in this type of video is that Tesla appears to have started Model Y production out of Giga Texas. A lineup of nine Model Ys was spotted parked outside the factory and posted by Jeff Roberts on Twitter. From what we've heard, these should be Model Ys with 4680 battery cells and structural battery packs. What's interesting here is that over in Berlin, Tesla is supposedly starting production with the same Model Y design that currently ships, and they are starting only with performance Model Ys. The wheels configured on the Model Ys out of Texas are Gemini wheels, only configurable on the long range Model Y, so Tesla might be taking an entirely different route at each factory. We should get updates soon on Tesla's earnings call taking place on January 26th, but the latest we've heard for Berlin is that Elon Musk plans to visit that factory in mid-February. That lines up with the latest rumors that Tesla plans to begin deliveries out of that factory in March. Tesla also posted photos of the graffiti art that they are putting up at that factory, or at least artists are putting up. Lastly, regarding factories, Elon said that he just visited Giga Texas and there is great progress there, so again, hopefully we'll get clarification on January 26th. Next up today, some big news for Tesla involving audio. Tesla is known as a vehicle company, but as many have pointed out, even Elon Musk recently, they are so much more. Tesla vertically integrates deeper than any company who makes cars, and overall this is a good thing. It helps them to make a better overall product and allows them to dial in things like their glass or audio systems specific to their cars, among many other things. They can also tweak these systems with software updates over time rather than relying on a third party to do that. Their vertical integration can sometimes be a weakness with certain features lacking compared to other brands, and sometimes that's what people focus on exclusively. However, this integration is exactly what helped Tesla navigate chip shortages to beat their delivery records in 2021. Tesla, of course, focuses their vertical integration into making the best product they can, and currently they mainly make cars. Down the line though, Tesla will have a fully developed AI department that will develop AI separate from self-driving. They will also have many other departments that thus far have been focused on vehicle integration, but will be able to branch out. It looks like the next place Tesla is looking to branch out is in audio. Tesla applied for Tesla and T trademarks in a new audio equipment category. Quote, Tesla trademark registration is intended to cover the categories of microphones, headphones, earphones, digital audio players, sound transmitting apparatus, audio speakers, subwoofers, earpads for headphones, audio interfaces, audio equalizer apparatus, horns for loudspeakers, megaphones. On the official listing, we can see the well-known Tesla logo as well as their T logo. Back in 2019, Elon Musk tweeted saying, quote, Tesla audio engineers come from B&O and many other companies. They literally rock. Our system is highly programmable, so we keep improving 
improving it via over-the-air codec updates. As it turns out, they were actively working on this, and we've seen them expand quite a bit with their audio in their new cars. In the new refreshed Model S and X, Tesla introduced an improved sound system, saying, quote, a 22-speaker, 960-watt audio system with active road noise reduction offers the best listening experience wherever you are. This is the best system they have ever shipped, but each of their cars includes a great audio system. Recently, they actually eliminated a speaker in the Model 3 and Y, bringing those cars to a 13-speaker sound system. Many worried about this, but according to Tesla, being relayed through Sawyer Merritt, this reduces complexity and redundancy. It also gives them more flexibility in the future for audio improvement over the air. I'll make sure to test this out because I'm particularly keen to sound system in cars and love the Model S and Y systems in particular. All within the last year of these systems, Tesla has improved them over the air, adding their immersive sound feature, adding a subwoofer or specific adjustment to the EQ options, and most recently adding the noise cancellation feature to the Model S and X. That last feature was promised from the beginning and just arrived. At a certain point, Tesla is going to have an audio system that can't be improved too much beyond where it's at, which could be where this new trademark comes into play. After all, if Tesla audio engineering is great, why limit it to cars? Tesla entering the audio space has a wide range of possibilities. First, it could be as simple as Tesla slapping their own branding on their speakers in their cars. If you look in many modern cars, you'll see a Bose logo or B&O logo, so maybe Tesla wants to join in on the fun and put their own badge on their speakers developed in-house. The next option away from that could be that Tesla wants to implement something along the lines of what Rivian has done with their R1T. In the R1T, it comes with a removable Bluetooth speaker that has a dedicated location in the car beneath the front console. It charges there, and then you can use it outside the car when camping or doing anything else you need a Bluetooth speaker for. Perhaps Tesla wants to brand their own speaker to do this same kind of idea in their cars. I personally see that as unlikely, and would guess Tesla has larger plans long term. Apple currently dominates the wireless headphone market, particularly with AirPods, AirPods Pro, and AirPods Max, all of which are priced at a premium. Even with that huge market and domination by Apple, research from Strategy Analytics says that only one in 10 people owns a Bluetooth headset. Quote, there is still plenty of potential in the broader Bluetooth headset market. As leading vendors are no longer bundling wired headsets with new smartphones, we see huge potential for Bluetooth headsets. Tesla has the audio experience as well as the brand recognition and cool fact that many associate with Apple. Elon Musk has said that smartwatches and phones are yesterday's technology and that Neuralink is the future, but maybe Tesla wants to utilize their audio team to make a great audio product. On the other side of things, Tesla recently hired engineers from Jawbone and Amazon Lab 126. As noted by Electrek, these engineers developed Amazon Echo speakers there, so this could point to a product in that category merging Tesla's AI efforts with their audio efforts. At the end of the day, trademarks like this will sometimes never get used, so it's possible Possible we won't see anything come of this, but there are many avenues that Tesla could pursue with trademarks in the audio space as a whole. Next up today, a couple of small updates to the Model 3 and Y. First, for the Performance Model 3, Tesla has removed any mention of a lowered suspension from their website. This used to be a standard feature included with the Performance Model, seemingly for better handling, so people have taken this as a sign that Tesla may be upgrading to the long sought after air suspension these cars would benefit from. Tesla has tested an air suspension on the Model 3 and Y for a while now, and it would be a massive improvement to ride quality in those cars, but I won't be getting my hopes up. In any case, that's an interesting update, and we'll see what comes of this as these cars get delivered. The Model Y performance still lists the lowered suspension, so we'll see if that's something they remove from that car as well in the coming days. For the Model Y coming to Berlin, some pre-production models have been spotted testing in Norway. At the same time, some notice that the maximum payload listed for the Model Y has increased. The car has new brakes, it has the new AMD processor, and a new power steering ECU. These are all minor changes, but it's unclear what would increase the payload on these cars, leading some to think that Tesla may be making the structural battery Model Y in Berlin as well as Texas. Time will tell and we'll get confirmation soon enough about what these updates truly mean for customers. Next up today, Tesla Insurance has expanded to a few more states. For the longest time, Tesla Insurance was only available in California. Recently, however, Tesla has expanded to Texas and Illinois, offering insurance there. What is different in Texas in particular is that they are using their real-time driving behavior stats collected from the vehicle, and from what we can tell, this is the safety score calculator they use for the FST beta. Now Tesla is expanding to Arizona 
Arizona, and Ohio, making it available in five states. This is something Elon Musk has talked about expanding for a long time, so it's great to see it finally arriving in more states gradually. On Tesla's insurance website, it now says, quote, get comparative rates in Arizona, California, Illinois, Ohio, and Texas in as little as one minute. Insurance based on real-time driving behavior now available in Arizona, Illinois, Ohio, and Texas. Interesting to note that the only state not using real-time driving behavior for rates is California. This is likely since Tesla insurance has been here long before the new safety score feature was introduced, and that will need to get approved by regulators before being approved. It is expected to arrive though, and Tesla will adjust drivers' premiums month to month depending on your safety score. Back in October, Elon Musk said that they are aiming to have Tesla insurance in most states by the end of 2022, but it is a tough process since every state handles insurance differently. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out because it does incentivize drivers to drive better, but Elon Musk has said there are, quote, definitely further refinements coming to early beta safety test score. It will likely be an incentive for some to switch to Tesla insurance and others to switch away from Tesla insurance. Next up today, a new survey of searches has shown that the Tesla Roadster and Cybertruck are the most popular upcoming electric vehicles despite their ongoing production delays. Lise Fetcher has put together a report detailing the most anticipated EV models, and even though it was introduced in 2017, the Roadster tops yearly and monthly searches. Next on the list is the Cybertruck, followed by the Apple Car, BMW i4, and on from there with a number of upcoming EVs from various brands. Notably for the US only, looking at this visualization, we can see that the Cybertruck is dominating interest. If you look at their report for, quote, the most desired EV model in every country for 2021, the Model 3, Model X, and Model S top searches in the majority of countries, with the Model Y down the list, likely due to its limited global availability right now. As far as search volume though, the Model Y topped 2021 as the most desired EV. It's definitely an interesting report to see what cars are of most interest to people and see that Tesla continues to dominate, even with products yet to be released. In their conclusion, they say, quote, Tesla has such a domineering presence in the electric car industry that it's no surprise that their models are amongst the most popular current models and the most anticipated. For many, Tesla is synonymous with electric cars. Next up today, a quick update about the Model X. Even though Tesla was seen displaying a seven-seater Plaid Model X in Taiwan, it appears that Tesla will no longer be making a five or seven-seater Plaid Model X. For those who ordered one, Tesla is asking them to change to a long-range Model X or switch the Plaid to a six-seater. Luckily, Tesla isn't charging these customers for the six-seat configuration if they had previously configured five or seven, but forcing that change is frustrating for many, especially if you wanted that car. If you order online, the price of this car has actually gone up by $6,500, the price of that six-seat interior, because it's now the only option. It's unclear why Tesla has made this change, but does limit options, particularly for those who need seven seats in an SUV and want to go all electric. They'll have to settle for a slightly slower SUV instead of the fastest one ever. Tesla lists the performance specs of the Model X at a 2.5 second zero to 60, but an owner using Plaid launch mode in the Model X actually achieved a time faster than that at 2.3 seconds. They officially clocked the time and that 0.2 second difference is actually pretty significant when getting into zero to 60 times as low as this, and it's insane for an SUV the size of the Model X. I'm hoping to review one of these soon, and if you've taken delivery or will soon, feel free to email me or message me on social media linked in the description below. I love to come review your Model X. Next up today, a new EV subscription company called Autonomy has launched with a Tesla Model 3 fleet. On their website, they say that it's the cheapest, fastest, easiest way to get a Tesla Model 3 with flexible pay-by-the-month car subscriptions that give you access to a whole new world of mobility. They charge a start fee as well as a monthly subscription and claim that you can pick up as soon as tomorrow. Essentially, this is like a lease without the money borrowing aspect or the long-term commitment, and they include routine maintenance, roadside assistance, and 10,000 miles per year. It's definitely an interesting concept, but I'm interested to know what your thoughts are. Would you rent a Model 3 long-term from a company like Autonomy? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. You can reserve one for $100 on their website, and it's currently limited to California and iPhones, quote, expanding to new locations in Android soon. Last up today, Rivian has partnered with Under Canvas to bring EV chargers to many different campsites. This continues their focus on making their cars adventure vehicles, and they said, quote, today, Under Canvas and Rivian announced a first-of-its-kind partnership between the two brands. With the addition of the electric vehicle maker and automotive technology companies, open network waypoints chargers to the upscale outdoor hospitality brands camp locations. Rivian waypoints will be available for guest use at Under Canvas Moab and Under Canvas Lake Powell 
tall grand staircase in time for the 2022 season. These are level two chargers meant for overnight charging, but it signals the beginning of Rivian's plans to expand what they call their adventure network. This is their equivalent to the Tesla supercharger network and hopefully will be expanding to many more fast charger locations as more R1T customers take delivery this year. That's all the latest Tesla news for today. So in the meantime, if you wanna see a list of the ways we want Tesla to improve this year, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.